Hello and welcome. We're finally starting Stripe payments today, which is going to be a lot of fun, and I imagine a lot of people will be here for the first time just to go through the payment section of this course. So I want to show you the .env file. It won't come from the repository. You need to make this. So just put this in the folder here, .env. Make yourself a node underscore env. That will equal dev, and just kind of follow this along. We're going to get you a MongoDB, we're going to get you a, a Stripe uh, private key as well. But for right now, I want the node and the port. JWT secret can be any long string you want. JWT expires. Mine's doing 14 days. I suggest you just copy these two lines the way they are for now and change them if you need to for your app. Let's take a look at where I got this MongoDB connection string. You want to head over to MongoDB, make yourself an account or sign in. When you sign in, go to the top left here and you could go new project. I'm going to use the project I'm using right now. Sign up for free everything. Make sure what you get is free. This is just a demo project. It won't have a lot of users. The free tier is perfect. Now, after you've made yourself a new project up here, you can make yourself a cluster. Create a cluster. It'll take a few minutes. It's a pretty easy walkthrough that they give you on this website as well. Now we need to connect. So go to connect. We want to connect to your application and you will right away have all of this. So copy that, bring it over to your .env file grab all of this here all the way to the end, delete it. Uh, you actually won't even have it. So just write database equals and then put in your string. You're going to need to put your password in here. I just used the name as the password. So I typed demo user two as the name and demo user two as the password. And then what we have here is the database name. You can name this anything. I'm going to name mine e-com for e-commerce. Now we have that set up and you're set up for MongoDB. Let's set up for Stripe and this should be new to all of us. So head over to Stripe, the Stripe website, log in or sign up for an account and you will be at your dashboard. In your dashboard, you can make a new project from the top left or a new account, they call it. And then go to developers after you've made your new account and get your API keys. So API keys are right under developers. And now you have a publishable key and a secret key. I'm not going to show my secret key, but all you have to do is click there and it'll come out. Now, I'm going to use my publishable key to show you what to do with this. So I will just copy that to the clipboard here and, and we'll make a new .m variable called stripe underscore secret underscore key. And I'll set that equal to, this is of course not my secret key, this is my PK, my public key, but I'll set that equal to my secret key. So just make that change here and you should be all ready to start this portion of the course. Let's get started. So let's finally install Stripe. I'll bring up a terminal. I'm going to yarn in this terminal, split the terminals, CD to the front end, and we will yarn there as well. Now in the front end is where we're going to add Stripe. Now inside your front end, this is a lot to type and I just made a mistake on it. So yarn add at Stripe slash react dash Stripe dash JS and then a space for at Stripe slash Stripe dash JS and we'll add those two. Let's begin our Stripe implementation. So in the front end, src and app.js, we have to bring a few things in. Import elements from, and this is at Stripe React dash Stripe. And we'll also import load Stripe from and we'll find that two that is in at stripe 
slash stripe, that one. So we have those two ready for us. Now we're going to, inside of app, make a const called stripe promise that will equal load stripe. And this is how we get access to stripe. Inside of here, we need our uh, public key. So this one for me, I'll copy it and I'll paste it in as a string. So now we have our Stripe promise ready to go. Now we'll need to wrap the elements that use Stripe with our Stripe promise. We can make this a little smaller if we wanted to. We could just wrap the one element that we want to wrap, but I'd rather just wrap this entire switch here. So before the switch, we will make a elements. We will write Stripe, and then we'll point to the Stripe promise that we made. Close that up, wrap everything. So wait for the next switch. And after that, paste that in and you are good to start this off. Now I'm going to yarn run dev here to see if everything is working. And we are up and running without any errors. So we're looking pretty good here. So Stripe is in our app, good job. Now let's start up our checkout component. So SRC components folder will be checkout. And inside of there, I'm going to name this after Stripe. So I'll call it Stripe pay.js. Let's do the regular. We'll import React from React. We're going to need to import a few things from React Redux, uh, use selector, which we've used a bunch in the course, and use dispatch, which we've also used a bunch, uh, from React-Redux. We'll import the API that we made to communicate with our back end. Uh, we won't need it right away, but it doesn't hurt to import. It's in our utils. So util API, and just two more imports. We don't have to come up and down too much on this file. It'll be set alert. That's the alert system that we created uh, a few videos ago now. And let's find it in Redux actions, alert actions. Okay, uh, the final thing we need to import is all of the Stripe elements. So card element, use stripe that's a nice hook that they have for us and use elements from and then we just need to find that again it's at stripe react dash stripe js now const stripe pay will be a fat arrow function that exports default pay. We're going to keep track of some state locally here. So I'm just going to comma to use state so we can use the use state hook as well. And let's define the things that we will need. Const will have name on card comma set name on card. That will be equal to use state and we'll leave it empty for the start. Now we'll need to get stripe. So const stripe is going to equal use stripe invoked. And we'll need the elements. So const elements equals use elements and invoke that as well. Finally, we need access to dispatch. So const dispatch will equal use dispatch. Let's reach into our state as well to get the total. So const total, we'll need that number in order to make the payment, will equal use selector and state, and let's point it at state.cart reducer, which will give us our total. I'm going to set up one variable just so we can see what we could do in Stripe. We're going to have a description, you know, which is a pretty custom field in Stripe. Right now it'll just say purchase from, I will say blank store. 
we've written quite a few uh, updater functions like this. Uh, this is just going to be on name on card, and it'll take in e the event, and in the body we will do the work here. So set name on card, pass an e dot target dot value. And now we could keep track of the name on card in our name on card const up here through this function. Now today we will set up our payment form and get it on the page. So let's first return. And inside of some parentheses, we will have form. That's the first piece of it, class name. And there's going to be a lot of class names here. So stripe-pay. And that will basically wrap everything. Now we'll have a div with the class name of stripe-pay-pay underscore underscore title. And the title will be checkout. Next, make a div with the class name equal to stripe dash pay underscore underscore grid. Inside of that one, so the last one was after checkout, now inside of the grid element, make a div class name equal to stripe dash pay underscore underscore row. Now these rows will surround our inputs. So input, and we have a few things to do. So I'll put it on a different line. Name is name on card. Name is equal to name on card. The class name here will be stripe pay row input. So stripe dash pay underscore underscore row dash input. We'll have a type equal to text. A value, set that equal to the name on card variable. And on change, we will hook up to the function that we just made. So set that equal to e and pass it to that function on name on Oh, I wrote cart. We're going to change that to card. Okay, and invoke that. Uh, and when you invoke that, pass E. You need to pass the event because we need it up here. Oh, I had a couple typos up here. This says target. Uh, target. E dot target dot value. Sorry if you copied that improperly. Let's set ourselves a placeholder. So placeholder will equal name. And finally, we'll just have a required setting, and that will be true. Let's close up that input. Now we need another Stripe Pay row, and we're using these rows to make the elements that we're getting from Stripe look a little more like the elements we're making here. So we have our class name, Stripe Pay Row, again, and I'll make sure it does end, and inside of there, we're finally going to use card element. Styling a card element feels pretty clunky if you ask me. You have your options here, and inside of there, it's two different objects. Inside the second object, you can mark style. Inside of there, make an object. Inside of there, make a base. And then another object. And then you can get to things like font size which will be 16 px as a string. And I know that was quite a bit, that's just how it's written, so we have to kind of obey the way they wrote it. So now we'll write dot dot placeholder, and there we will also open a, an object to style the placeholder with a color that will be hash aab, 7c4, and then we'll comma to the, oh, make sure this is a string. Uh, everything's going to be seen as a variable if it's not a string, there we go. And we will have a font family of 
san, uh, sans dash serif. That's how that's written. OK, great. Now here, I'll come out of the placeholder, and I'll comma out of base, and then move to invalid. Perfect. Now invalid, we're going to set a color so that the invalid color matches our invalid colors. So it'll be the hash and then E9327, 9327C. OK, so E9327C for the invalid color. All right, that should be all of it. So let's get outside of options. That's right here, and we can close this up. Finally, we need to add some radio toggles. So we want to be able to save a card and use a save card that someone has on their account. So we're going to make a toggle that allows us to do both of those things. Where we really want to be now is outside of the pay grid. So that's this one. OK, there it is. And this will make a little more sense as we style it. Right now, we're just trying to get everything on the page and take a look at it so that we can uh, kind of get our heads around styling it. So we'll have a div with a class name equal to stripe dash pay underscore underscore row. And then stripe dash pay underscore underscore row dash radio. So we'll have two different uh, class names attached to it. Inside of there, make a div with a class name equal to radio and radio dash dash fill. OK, that's going to be the radio button that is not empty, that is actually filled. Let's go ahead and close that up. And in there, we'll write use saved card. We'll ask them if they want to use the saved card. We need to do another one of these. I'm just going to copy it down this time. Copy and paste. I won't use the radio fill, so we'll have one empty and one full for when we actually start looking at it. And this one will just say save card. So if you want to save the card that you're currently using. After that, we're going to need our button. So here we'll make a div with the class name equal to stripe dash pay underscore underscore row. We'll make a button inside of here with the class name stripe dash pay underscore underscore button. We'll also write disabled and that will be set to if there's no stripe, then you need to be disabled. We don't want the payment to uh, try to be processed if stripe isn't present yet. And inside that button, we're going to write pay. Let's head over now and get this into our app. So we have stripe pay right here, and we want it to be on that shopping cart page, the shopping cart slash checkout page. So we need to wrap it in parentheses for one. We'll do that first. We're going to also bring in fragment up here. So fragment. And we'll wrap everything in the fragment. And we're going to now be able to bring in that other component. So import stripe pay from dot dot slash to components to checkout to stripe pay. Perfect. Now we'll have the cart, and under that will be Stripe Pay. And let's take a look at what the shopping cart looks like now. Now here is our cart, and this we did in the last lesson, and here is our checkout. Here we could write our name here, we could put our card information here. Uh, we could use our saved card or save a card, and we could press the pay button. It doesn't look pretty, but we did a lot of work and got everything on the page. We will make it look great in the next lesson. So follow me right over to the next lesson. Great job today, and keep coding.